Hello, everybody. Chris Hamilton here with um, Enter My Invoice, Bookkeeping Automation, and also with uh, SalesTipAday.com. Almost sounds confusing, doesn't it? Uh, anyways, uh, we're going to wait for about two minutes to get this started. Um, this is part of a weekly presentation that I uh, started doing. Uh, typically, it's, it's to help out bookkeepers and accountants, but also anyone who's in marketing, actually, or anyone who owns a business. Uh, this will help them out as well. And uh, just to give you a bit of a background, if you don't know who I am, uh, I'm one of the owners of EnterMyInvoice.com, also BookkeepingAutomation.com. What we are is an accounts payable and accounts receivable software platform. Um, the, we just expedite the whole AP process and the AR process. Uh, and also, um, I run a website called Sales Tip a Day, which um, unfortunately doesn't get a sales tip a day because I just don't have the time anymore, but I do put uh, information up there on a fairly consistent basis as well. So this is the first step of kind of 12 steps. Last week I did a presentation on um, called Multiplier Marketing. And it's just literally how can you, uh, how can you leverage um, – really one piece of content and have mass exposure out to the marketplace. So what I'm going to do over the next kind of 12 to 13 weeks is I'm going to break it out step by step. Ultimately, this will end up in a course that um, people can see as well. <clears throat> and um, then uh, you'll be able to go from there. So I am just on. Th um, let's see here. We'll check. Um, and it's periodically. I just had to write something in the uh, thing. So anyways, we're at 8.30, so I'm going to get this started. So welcome. Thanks for coming to uh, the 12 Ways to Multiply Your Marketing, step one, which is creating a lead generation pr uh, presentation. Um, really, before I get started, the presentation, part of this whole process, the presentation is the starting point or the core of what you're going to do um, with your um, with your offer um, to get out there. So, anyways, here's what I'm going to talk about. So, the first things first. If you hang around long enough, uh, if you're a bookkeeper accountant, I've got a special offer for you. If you just want to do sales and marketing, I've also got a special offer. I've got a couple of different offers up there as well. So, just if you hang to the end, I'll get you that kind of information. So, here's what you're going to learn in this. Um, uh, uh, Facebook live event today is you're going to learn some of the must haves for a presentation. Um, I know people aren't comfortable. Uh, a lot of people aren't comfortable giving presentations um, or going live. Um, but quite honestly, you know, it's one of those things. If you can get past that reluctance, um, creating a presentation and using it and sharing it for marketing purposes is a great way to do things. So I'm going to show you the must-haves for a presentation. I'm going to show you seven steps to creating a presentation and what you have to do. I'm going to show you five different ways that you can create uh, presentations, really cool looking groovy graphics and everything like that. I'm going to show you the five must-haves for a presentation as well. So step number one is uh, creating your presentation. So obviously what you see down below in this slide is I've got the screenshot of kind of what I originally started with, which is um, this creating a lead generation presentation. So, you know, realistically, it all starts with the presentation, as I said. So really what we're going to get into is we're going to talk about kind of in this first step is the main point. Um, the main point of your presentation uh, it's going to be the basis of your presentation. It's kind of what you're going to get across um, to people. And when I talk about this, sorry, I'm just going to expand this out. Sorry, so it's a little easier to see. Uh, when I talk to people, um, you know, I often come at it from what is a client or a potential uh, a potential prospect or potential client's pain points. So, for example, in this case. I know when I used to go, when I'm well, not used to, I still do. When I go out and talk to accountants and bookkeepers um, about our software, one of the things that I constantly hear from them is that uh, their biggest pain point is finding new clients. And quite honestly, um, it's a process, it's a methodology. And, and one of the things that I explain to people is that uh, you have to devote time each day to prospect to find new clients. Um, you know, you'll get to a point where, uh, you've got enough clients, and it's just a bit of a, uh, if you lose a client, just a little bit more um, prospecting or marketing to get a client coming on. Um, but in this case, what I, the point I'm trying to get at is 
bookkeepers and accountants have a tough time marketing themselves, finding clients. So henceforth, this is why I've created a presentation like this. So this is the whole process in action so you understand that. Um, part of the main point uh, of what you're trying to get across is uh, you really, you really, there's kind of five things listed on the right-hand side here. You want to kind of show a problem that's there. You want to try to explain the pain. You want to show kind of what the cost is to the prospect. You want to show the solution. You want to show the value. So this is, I mean, it's not written in stone. You can do other presentations. Uh, I was thinking about this last night when I was doing this, and it's like, you know, you could do the top 10 things that um, uh, people need to know about uh, CRA audits or something like that, right? So um, now, the main thing is there, though, you are showing a problem, you're showing a pain, you're showing what the cost is, you're showing a solution, you're showing value along the way. And on the left-hand side, what you see is this is a presentation that I've done on a fairly consistent basis, which is how to increase your bookkeeping practice profitability by 259% in a quarter of the time while getting your clients to do half the work. Well, first of all, who doesn't want to increase your profitability so they make more money? Who doesn't want to work in a quarter of the time? And who doesn't want their clients to do half their work for them? It's a super simple thing. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm showing there's a problem. This is like Basically, the problem is you're not working effectively, right? Then I start getting into what is that pain. That pain is you're missing out on uh, a potential profit, on revenue and stuff like that. What's the cost to the prospect? Um, you know, I go into the details on, on that sort of stuff as well. Then I kind of branch into, you know, I pick at that problem and then I break into the solution, which lo and behold is my software platform. Uh, and then what I do is I get on and I start showing the value on what this means to a person. So I really go through and I actually use an average um, uh, salary for a bookkeeper and show kind of how they can uh, double uh, triple, quadruple their uh, hourly income um, just by doing things a little differently. So there you go. That's kind of that main point. The other thing, too, is when I get into presentations, what you're going to see, especially in this one, like once again, this is the presentation uh, or this whole process in action, is you make it about 90, maybe 95% educational and about 10% selling. And realistically, what I do is I do a lot of the Here's the education up front, and by the way, it kind of loops around, and here's some stuff in the back end that will help you out, um, which is the selling aspect of this thing. So that was kind of that first area that we look at. The second area is kind of how to sort your ideas. And, um, you know, to, to create a presentation, it's a blank slate, basically. And you got to go out and you got to think about what is it that I'm going to present. So first of all, you need to kind of brainstorm and think about specific ideas or what it is. And then you have to have a place to place these ideas, to move them around, to understand kind of how and what you're going to put as the basis of your presentation. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple of ways that I do it. And the first way I do it, I use something called a mind map. And I use a mind map software from mindmeister.com. I don't know how much it is. Um, but this thing is amazing. So what happens is, um, in fact, this one is the presentation that I did today. These are some of the ideas that I was throwing at it um, uh, today. And then actually underneath these ideas, there are sub ideas. And unfortunately, it doesn't show there because I don't have it expanded. But I start with the main point, which is step one, which is presentations, which is what I'm talking about today. And then what happens is you get in and you start seeing some of these sub areas that I need to talk about and what they are. And then what I can do is I can move these around depending on kind of where I want them to show up. Um, I can put uh, main ideas into sub ideas. There's a whole bunch of different things. So this is just a way for you to take your thoughts and put it in a place and put some semblance to it so that you can do it. So um, I would highly recommend um, if you're going to get into uh, marketing or if you're going to get again into um, pushing um, or, or uh, promoting your, your business in a way like using presentations or, or any of that stuff, um, take a look at MindMap. It's mindmeister.com, um, and it's really not overly expensive. So this is kind of the first way, and this is the primary way that I sort things. Now, this I don't do, but I've seen a lot of people do. Uh, they use post-it notes. So they, what they do is they kind of put categories and then they put subtopics below. So it's very similar to kind of that mind mapping process. Uh, I guess the only problem with this is you got to have enough wall space to be able to uh, to do this sort of stuff uh, and put it up. And last but not least, one of the other ways, uh, actually there's a couple different ways you can do it, uh, is a notepad 
where you can jot your ideas down. Now, the only problem with this is obviously it's, if it's written in ink, you can't move it around or do anything like that. Um, but it's a way to put it. And then finally, um, the old good old word document. So you can throw your ideas in a word document, um, kind of put them at um, kind of category level and then put subcategories underneath it. You can kind of copy, paste, move it around, do different things like that. So there's kind of, that's how you kind of sort your ideas and get them ready for a presentation. So once you've kind of sorted your ideas and you want to um, create a presentation, here's kind of five different ways that you can create a presentation. So everybody out there is pretty much familiar with PowerPoint. So give me one second to take a drink of coffee. Everyone out there is familiar with PowerPoint. PowerPoint is you know, the mechanism for which you can um, uh, display your thoughts and process and walk through uh, everything. Um, it's uh, it's a good tool. I haven't really used it in a long time. I'm a Mac user, so um, so I don't really use that. What I do use though on a Mac is Keynote. So Keynote is Mac's um, answer to the PowerPoint. Um, I like it. Really simple to use, um, and uh, and can create some half decent looking presentations. In fact, this uh, presentation is in Keynote. Uh, there's three more that I'm going to add in here that probably people don't know about, or they may be familiar at least with one or two of them. Uh, one that's kind of really cool uh, is something called VizMe. Uh, so I think it's viz.me is where you go, but just look up VizMe. And VizMe will allow you to create um, up to three presentations before you have to upgrade to a premium account. And that's really cool because what you do is you just, you kind of create a presentation, you can drop and drag segments into it, you can add things, it's all kind of templated and it takes a really almost, you know, it takes uh, zero effort to make, well I shouldn't say, it takes some effort obviously to make a really cool looking presentation. The other thing I like about VisMe, which is uh, pretty neat, is the fact that you can make like infographics that you can, uh, prepare and send out to people as well. So take a look, you know, at a tool like VisMe, uh, kind of creates some really cool stuff. Another one that's out there is Prezi. So um, this is one where I'm thinking some people understand what Prezi is. Prezi is, once again, it's a presentation tool. It was created by, and I'm gonna, I may get this wrong, the guy who created Wired Magazine when he was talking at TED Talks, he hated, he hated the way that PowerPoint and Keynotes looked. Wanted something a little more flashy. So uh, Prezi's are kind of cool because you can build animations into your Prezi. And this is one that I did, which was on uh, a LinkedIn course that I had. And, uh, you probably can't see it, but inside LinkedIn, there's these small dark areas and stuff like that. When I advance this, I can record it, I can advance it, and it kind of zooms in on this, and then it goes to this point, and then it zooms in, and it's all animated. It looks really cool, and it's kind of nifty how you can do this sort of stuff with Prezi. So there's another tool that you can look at. And then last but not least is one of my most favorite tools um, that I use is Canva from Canva.com. So Canva has the ability to create uh, presentations. And what's cool about Canva is uh, it's free. There's a lot of templates that are free. There's some that you have to pay for, uh, but there's a whole bucket load that are free. And um, within Canva, what you do is when you sign up for an account, uh, you go in and then there's an option to choose uh, build a presentation. Then what you do is you go into layouts and they have a whole bunch of different layouts. So in this case, what you see is I just picked one up and it's got uh, the different layouts that you see here that you can add. Uh, there's some with like five pages, there's some with 10 pages. Uh, but the great thing is, is all this bits and pieces in here uh, can be written over, can be moved out, can put in, you can put new graphics in. You do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, it may take a bit of time, but it looks really super cool and you can use it as a presentation. The other thing that's kind of cool about Canva is you can create a whole bunch of different things. So once again, this kind of presentation piece that I created for um, uh, the initial slide in here, I created this in Canva. Hey, not super great looking, but I'll tell you, it's a heck of a lot better than me making it in a Word document or a PowerPoint document. So um, that's kind of, uh, you know, just gives you a bit of an understanding. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about just in this segment is when you're building out your presentation, um, if you want to use pictures, here's a great way to get um, pictures that are free use. So just go into Google, type up uh, a topic or a term or whatever you want, uh, search, click on images, and then what you do is go over to the tools section here. When you go on tools, it says labeled for reuse. When you click on that, click down here, it says labeled for reuse. 
So what this means is that uh, any of these images that show up in here, what you do is you right click on your mouse and you save the image or you can copy the image and put it into your presentation. This is a free way to get great pictures to add to your presentation. In fact, I did that with this slide here, this slide here. Um, uh, that's how I ended up finding these, uh, these logos and documents uh, for this presentation. So there we are, kind of that's the first three steps here uh, as we walk through this, um, which is coming up with your main point and then obviously um, creating the, uh, getting into the presentation and the tools and all this good stuff. What I wanna do is, uh, so I'm not an overly creative guy. Um, I can think things and I can present things, but I'll tell you when, when it comes to graphics and stuff, and I don't know if it comes through in this presentation, I'm not a creative guy at all. But if I wanna come up with inspiration on how to create a presentation that might look half decent, uh, here's a recommendation. And I, I kinda, I talked about this in last week's um, uh, presentation. We'll get to SlideShare in the future here in a couple of, uh, in a couple of uh, these Facebook sessions down the road here. Um, go to slideshare.net. And SlideShare, it's owned by LinkedIn. It's a place where people put their presentations up. And when you go into slideshare.net on, uh, on the front page, I believe, actually, if you go into Explorer, so there's an Explore button here, there's a whole bunch of different sections in here. And what you can do is just click on any of these sections and just start poking around some of these presentations. And what you're going to see is you're going to see some, you'll see some really cool ideas about how to, um, pull stuff together and present. So this is, uh, it's just a way to potentially get some inspiration uh, for you to, um, uh, you know, pull together a half decent looking presentation as well. So there you go. Um, I'm going into, now I'm going to go into kind of the structure of a presentation. So kind of the five things that you need to throw into your presentation. Um, and you'll see I've done this in my presentation as we get to the very end. You'll see that I've hit all five. Just taking another drink of coffee here. Mm. The, um, the first thing that you want to do is you kind of, you want to put an agenda in. You want to tell people kind of what they're going to learn if they watch this. So for example, um, let's just say you're an accountant and you want to talk about um, uh, tax preparation tips or how to, how to reduce your taxes for the year, right? Five tips for reducing taxes. You, know, you put the agenda and say, I'm going to go through five tips that, um, five tips that you need to know to reduce your taxes. Then you can put in there, uh, one little known, you know, something like one little knowing tactic that you can use every day, um, to reduce your taxes. Um, then, you know, like little bits and pieces in there that, so put an agenda together so people know kind of what they're going to, uh, to be learning about. Um, the next thing that you want to do is, you know, we get into the structure, which is that main presentation. Um, so you start with an the agenda, then you get into your presentation. Uh, this was kind of last week's presentation, that multiplier marketing effect. Um, so you just start building out your, your main presentation. Um, you take those key points like I showed you in the MindMeister and you start building your presentation out around that. So you got the agenda, you got the structure. Then what you do is, I, I see this in tons of presentations um, and a ton of marketing and everything like that. Um, you've gone to the effort to educate someone, uh, but there's no call to action. You're not telling something, someone to do something. So, uh, you know, in this case, um, you know, if you go through your presentation, it's like, call us, download this, like our Facebook page, right? What I want you to understand is that, um, there's about a 6.23% per, uh, click, click-through rate for text when you're telling somebody to do something. So for every 100 people, you're getting just over six people to do that stuff. Um, and this is going to become very apparent when we go into the next few steps in this, is you're going to record this presentation. You're going to start pushing it out and putting it on like YouTube and different video sites and SlideShare and stuff like that have a call to action. You're trying to drive people towards you to do something. So that call to action could be, you know, download this report um, to find out or click here or go to whatever to download a report to find out 10 ways that you can reduce your taxes this tax season or whatever that call to action is. Um, so make sure that you add a call to action. Um, just as a, a bit of an understanding, you're going to see this at the very end, but I'm talking about right now. Here's a call to action that I have at the very end of this presentation. Um, 
it's, you know, it's how to access a 14 part LinkedIn little known tips and tricks course. And it's also 28 uh, most asked questions um, uh, on LinkedIn. And then what I do is on the right hand side, I've got this, you know, hit bit.ly forward slash 28 and 14 to sign up. It'll take you through to this page or um, text LinkedIn 14 to 440, uh, 44 in the U.S. or LinkedIn 14 to 1855-969-5300 in Canada. So basically, I'm telling you to do something. And by the way, I am telling you to do this right now if you can do it. So just, you know, that's your call to action that you have to put in there. The other thing you want to do is put in, uh, if you're doing these live, this, so this is kind of a... Um, uh, a section that you can put in because I do this live and obviously I'm doing this live right now and I'm, it's going to be recorded as well, which is great. Put in a Q&A section, which reminds me I'm going to go check and see if anyone's got it in the Q&A. Nope. Um, so do a question and answer and um, make sure that, um, you know, it's in there. If you're just, um, you know, if you're presenting live at an event or something like that, this is where you'd have that sort of stuff as well. Uh, and, Last but not least is uh, have a contact page. So show people how they can contact you. So I'm going to give this in a couple of different scenarios. Um, if you're giving a presentation live in a scenario like this, um, this is the area where people will write your contact information down and try to contact you after the fact if they like what you're saying, what you're doing as well. Um, so this is a way that people can contact you. And there's my contact information if you want to reach out to me. So that's kind of the five points that we, uh, we talk about in a main presentation. You know, put an agenda in, kind of get through your main presentation, have a call to action, uh, have a Q&A, and have a contact uh, page as well. Um, the, the other thing is now we're kind of into step six of this. Um, one of the things is, once you've created this presentation, I'll get into this in later on as well, is uh, create a PDF of this. Because what happens is you create this presentation, it's an excellent way to be able to send something to your clients as well. So make sure that you create that PDF uh, for people uh, so that you can attach it in an e email to send off to them. And we're down to the home stretch here, which is an example. So just kind of seven here, this is kind of, the seven, uh, seventh area here. So once again, I want to talk about an example. Uh, and this example is one I brought up earlier, which was how to increase your bookkeeping practice profitability by 259% in a quarter of the time while getting your clients to do half the work, right? So catchy title, who as a bookkeeper, or if I wanted to do an accountant, uh, doesn't want to learn how to work less, make more, and get my clients to do half my business or half the, half the stuff that I want them to do. This is... Um, it's kind of a mind altering way for people to look at things. Um, this was a great example of how I, uh, and here's, okay, so to give you another example on this was what I did was I created this presentation um, and this is kind of where we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you an example with this. So I created this presentation. Then what I did was I started putting Facebook ads up to drive people through and I also reached out to um, accountants and bookkeepers that uh, I'm connected with on LinkedIn or no. And then what I did was I did a Google Hangout similar to like this Facebook Live event where um, I presented this and then I had a recording and that recording then ended up going into a blog post and it went into a podcast and it went into SlideShare and it went into a bunch of different places. So this is kind of where I'm going to start taking you with this example as well. Um, in this case, you know, the example, I had kind of three main points, which is, um, you know, the first one is... Uh, how to be more profitable. The second one is how to work in a quarter of the time. And the last one is, um, you know, how to get your clients to do half of your, uh, half your job for you. Um, it's, as I say before, this is, it showed a different way for people to look at things. So I had a bunch of aha moments in there. Um, it also showed kind of, here's where you are today. Let me kind of show you where you could be, which is your path to enlightenment. And then last but not least, I had a strong call to action in here, which uh, allowed people to take a look at, um, uh, you know, what do I do? Uh, it's like get a 30 day free trial of the software so you can try it out and see how you can actually reduce your, um, uh, the time it takes and get more profitable. So that's kind of the, the seven steps here. So I, the one thing I just want to kind of convey is that this presentation, so I am going to do another, uh, how many of these, 11 of these that ties together into this full multi, uh, multiple, uh, multiplying marketing uh, pr uh, process. Um, 
But the presentation, this is the start of your marketing. This is where, for me, this is where everything starts for me um, to do my marketing. Um, and like I said, over the next few weeks, I'm going to go over the other steps so that you can see uh, how this will work. So now I'm just in a couple of things, just like I say, kind of a special offer, just some things to throw out. Um, if you're a bookkeeper or an accountant and you want to learn some more tips and tricks about how to uh, do marketing and such, um, my recommendation would be go to you go to bookkeepingautomation.com, hit our vlog, and I've got a whole bunch of tips and tricks that I'm putting up there on a regular basis. In fact, I'll be putting this up over the next couple of days in the uh, in the vlog area as well. Uh, one of the other things that we have is I have I've created a course uh, on Teachable, and Teachable is one of these things that I'm going to actually teach in like the step ten or eleven, I think it is, in this whole process. Um, you can enroll in it for free if you go to bit.ly forward slash BA underscore tips. BA has to be capitalized. T has to be capitalized. You can sign up for this course. I've got all these marketing tips in there. I've got a whole bunch of things. There's, I think there's like 20 hours of content in a whole bunch of different courses that are in this uh, for people to, uh, bookkeepers and accountants to use. Um, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be just strictly a bookkeeper and accountant. You can register for this if you want, if you're outside of that world as well. Um, but it is slanted towards bookkeepers and accountants, but it has a whole bunch of marketing tips. This you saw earlier, I'll tell you what, you want this 14 part um, LinkedIn course, um, just go to bit.ly 28 and 14, text LinkedIn 14 to 44222 in the US or LinkedIn 14 to 1855. 969-5300 in Canada. This has a value of about $199, not about, it does have a value of $199. Um, if you're texting, it's gonna ask you for your email address and then what happens is it'll start delivering a course, a uh, segment of this course on a weekly basis to you as well. Uh, here's a special offer for um, bookkeepers and accountants. Um, the I, Give us a shot on enter my invoice. We're just gonna set to launch version two of our software. So we're not taking anyone on it yet. Uh, version two should be out the, the very beginning of March. Um, and currently it's gonna be working strictly with bank and credit card statements. Um, but I'll tell you what, you can do a 30, 30 day trial on one of your clients. Um, you can reach out to me or you can, if, if you just go to entermyinvoice.com, we have a, uh, a button on the main page that you can sign up for it as well. Uh, I wanna give you a, just an example. This is one that I'm gonna do in the future. It's gonna blog post that I'm gonna do in the future. I got a buddy of mine who, um, he was coding against bank and credit card students. He's, he was using the uh, kind of source documents as backup um, for details on this sort of stuff using our platform. He coded, he coded 1,600 transactions in three hours. He said that would have taken him easily 25 plus hours. So there's an hour to do that cleanup rate or that cleanup for clients. So effectively we took his $50 an hour rate up to over $400 an hour. So this, just by doing something like this, as a bookkeeper, you can actually earn more money than an accountant does on an hourly basis just by following a process like leveraging our platform. So our platform right now strictly works with QuickBooks desktop, banking credit card statements, that's the box we're in. If someone comes in and they have paper copies of their bank and credit card statements or they have PDFs of their bank and credit card statements, we can run them through our system, we could tie you into QuickBooks Desktop and we can help you out there. The other thing we could do, we can take those, put them into an Excel spreadsheet so you can put them into other platforms like Sage 50 or FreshBooks or anything like that or Xero. Um, so there's lots of ways we can help you. You can just reach out and contact us. Next webinars, as I say, we're gonna be breaking out the 12 steps. Uh, step two, which is recording your presentation. So now you've built your presentation. I'm gonna show you ways to record your presentation. Um, this one won't be a very long um, one, but it's uh, it's important. Uh, because you need to take your presentation and be able to put it out on different um, uh, platforms as well. So this one's going to be next Friday at 8.30 in the morning. Same thing, just come to facebook.com uh, forward slash enter my invoice and you'll be there. If you want to find out about these, uh, just like the page and you'll start seeing, uh, I send out notices uh, to people to invite them to the um, uh, to these presentations as well. So that's where you will get notified to find out more. I'm gonna flip over to uh, the section here. Don't know if anyone's actually watching, um, whether they are or not. It's um, 
Uh, for me, this is a lot of people see it after the fact, so I don't think there's going to be any questions on this. Uh, last but not least here, let's, uh, you know what, you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me, chris.hamilton at entermyinvoice.com, or you can reach out at um, sales tip, uh, chris at salestipaday.com or phone me at 403-630-1243. And hopefully you found this uh, information useful. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'll put my contact info in the um, comment section. And with that, have yourself a great day. Look forward to showing you more in the future here.